Yes, thank um, you. I'm wondering where you stand on ethanol and trade. We, we farm. And I also recently read today that you're a vegetarian. Is that yeah. correct? And this is like the third time I've gotten this question today. <laughs> yeah, and I literally was at another pizza ranch right before here. And I got the same question, so that's good. So, well, I, don't, I don't know where they... Yeah, I am vegetarian. That's true. Yep. Is that working for you in Iowa? Yeah, things work just fine for me in Iowa, actually. <laughs> <laughs> got that salad bar at the pizza ranch. I'm vegan. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's where the big muscles come from. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, so, my view is, and the beauty of this country is, so I was actually, I was part of the faith background I was raised in as a Hindu. My parents brought us up in a vegetarian household. And we stayed that way through our adulthood. But I'm not running for pastor. I'm running for president. And I swear an oath to the Constitution and keep it. The First Amendment comes first in the Bill of Rights. It says two things. You're free to worship freely, practice your religion. You're free to speak freely. But if you swear an oath to the Constitution, that means everybody else is also free to live out their purpose in this country without government interference as well. So... For farmers, again, a lot of the regulations coming from those three-letter agencies, that's really what's, I think, impeding the work of a lot of farmers in this country. The complex of OTIS regulations, I don't think have been very good. A lot of the EPA regulations, I don't think have been particularly helpful. I don't know if this affects you, but the carbon capture pipeline making its way across the northern and western part of the state violates the private property rights of farmers, which absolutely is the baseline threat that any landowner and any farmer actually faces is a threat to your private property. If they can build a pipeline across your backyard in the name of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to fight climate change, and that's a basis for eminent domain to build a pipeline on your land, the next thing they do is take your cow, right? Because they leave a $50 check in your mailbox. They set the price when it's eminent domain. And so I'm a president who's actually going to stand for every kind of business owner and entrepreneur, including farmers in this country, by standing for the Constitution and against the kinds of regulations that impede you from doing what you're going to do. But if, and I think if I'm connecting the dots between the question, I have to read that article that they got out there. But if the question is, oh, am I vegetarian? Is that going to affect sort of my beliefs for animal farmers or farmers or otherwise who are raising livestock? The answer to that is no. It's not my, it's not my choice to be able to say, just because I just sort of make certain choices, that I'm going to impose that on anybody else, just as nobody else's choices are going to be imposed on me. We have freedom in this country, and we need a president who understands that that's the oath that I take, is that it's to the Constitution. So I hope that addresses your question on that point. On the ethanol point, just to, just to leave that. Okay, they're going to drag me out of here soon. On the ethanol point, so I believe that energy security is national security. And so the more energy production we have in the United States, the better. The reason I favor the renewable fuel standard, the RFS, which you're probably familiar with, is actually a market-based justification. What I mean by that is if we had true consumer choice at the pump, we wouldn't need the RFS. But we don't have consumer choice at the pump because of oil industry lobbying. So then you look at the places where we do have consumer choice at the pump, like in Wichita. People actually choose a higher blend of ethanol in their fuel than the minimum set by the renewable fuel standard. But they can't do that elsewhere. That's why we have the renewable fuel standard as a second best alternative. So that's actually, I believe, a more principled justification for the renewable fuel standard, not because you're a politician that comes every four years to Iowa and briefly says, oh, I love farmers, and check that box before not doing anything about it. This is a market-based justification, and that's why on principle I stand for it. So I hope that addresses both of your questions. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sir. Two questions.